So now we discuss about a shading device. So we talk about the shading device from last class. So shading device, it protect radiation of heat and lighting transmittance. However, this is not just only for the function. Currently, shading device is very good to use as architecture aesthetic element as well. They just keeping the function, but they also provide aesthetic part as well. I just bring it out of this personal rendering image. The shading device becomes popular to use in architecture exterior and interior for aesthetic issues, as well as functionality. From this picture, image, interior shading canopy, you can see the metal curtain here, it is used over the receptionist in the lobby. It protects them from radiant solar energy penetration but it also create decoration impact in the lobby as well. So means when you're designing about the shading device, of course you have to be considered function, but also you have to be considered aesthetic. So first shading device, the system is the macro shading system. The, this is a macro shading system. The macro shading system is most popular automatic shading device. So this is a recess into the ceiling here. So Sachs can draw out uh, some detail, you can see. Let's draw here. So when you just think about the designing the, some, the slab, and then you probably designing about the drop ceiling a little bit. And then, so you just kind of designing the finish, the gypsum board wall, and then you usually add in the, this macro shading device here. And the macro shading device totally recess under the this drop ceiling zone. And then from the this one there you can design the gliding system here. Okay, so from the inside you only see the this the fabric, but you cannot see the this glass box here. I mean sorry, you do you cannot see the this the bright box here. Okay. So I think this will be better understanding about the installation and then the system from the, this video. So let's watch this video together and then we can jump into the next topic. So next shading device type is louver. So you might consider about the vertical louver or horizontal louver, it depending on the project location. So I working on the, this project, a Octavia project in San Francisco, we using the vertical louver, the green vertical louver here. So our strategy, this each the vertical louver is controlled by remote control from the inside. It means the each user per unit they control the some the lighting from the outside. So from the this region, this elevation is keep changing because each user having a different the preference. Okay, 
So it means you can just keep changing the elevation skin. You can make it a more dynamic facade image you can get. So also you can consider about the more fixed louver type. And also you can see the loop canopy here. So loop canopy. And then this is a fixed vertical louver. So this fixed vertical louver and the, this extrusion, the canopy is very hard to the protect the summer sun. But still getting the some winter sun because winter sun is much lower, still getting the sun energy from the the outside during the winter, but it protects the summer sun from the this canopy. So this is a more interesting type. So this project name is Arab World Institute designed by Jacques Nobel. Project located in the Paris. So Jacques Nobel inspired from Arabic the pattern, but they also designing about this shading device behind the glass curtain wall. So this one is elaborated mechanical shading. So this one, the this mechanical shading devices keep changing depending on the 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 sun strength. Okay, also sun energy. The repeated scale geometry pattern change the opening size as the amount of the sunlight and it makes the interesting the building facade. So from the inside, it is interior image, you also very find that the making very interesting casting shadow here. <clears throat> so the device is operated by the electric motor and the gear system. You can see the old gear system electric motor. So it is like a camera shutter operation. So this facade system is controlled by computer which analyzing solar energy that enter the building. However, I heard this sound is so noisy. So that's why currently it's not operating very well because about uh, some people complaining about this noise level. <coughs> so I just gonna bring it out uh, some one video too interesting about uh, this system. I think this is a pretty powerful and compelling project how architect using the shading device and how architect the make elevation pattern basically from the this shading device so let's watch this video together and then we talk about the next project これは現代フランスを代表する建築家ジャンヌーベルの代表作アラブ世界研究所ですその名の通りアラブのタペストリーを思わせる独特のパターンを描いています実はこの模様の一つ一つはコンピューター制御のメカニズムでできているのです中と外の温度差に応じてカメラの絞りのように窓が自動的に開閉する仕組みですー最先端のテクノロジーと芸術的デザインが見事に調和した自己制御する建築の輝かしい成功例です。So next project is Central Library of France, it located in the Paris, the designed by Dominic Perro. So this project is very powerful and a very well detailed project. The lower level, it is the library, and then they have four towers here. So when you're just looking at this four tower, you can see that these the timber shading device. But how it works? So this shading device actually behind of the glazing system and then this shading device operating by the people system. So means each user can control the, this people system. Sometimes totally open, sometimes closing down. Sometimes you can make in the balcony space, separating the, this balcony space and inside. So means using the, these types of the people system, it making out the very dynamic facade and elevation design. Also, they just using the, the stair case. They using the metal curtain. This metal curtain still visibly see the, this stair. However, it also block the, the radiant heat from the outside very well. So next, the shading device, the printed window. You remember about what is printed window from the last lecture. 
So this project is a Rolex Tower in Dubai, designed by SOM. The building is buried in a high performance curtain wall using the fritted glass. The glass trading consists of ceramic frit pattern for the shading purpose. So you can see this translucent color tea. It is all using the shading device made by the printed glass. So you can just see it's not actual solid color. They're using the more about the circular the pattern over the surface. So it protects the radiant heat very well from the outside, but from the inside still getting the diffused lighting from the outside. So next project is very interesting project I just called Dynamic Facade. The project name is Keeper Technique Showroom. So this is a very simple the, the detail, but it has the lots of interesting dynamic condition from the surface. So from this one you can see this is a structure. Then you see the rigid insulation outside. Then they just simply adding the, this the punch the window and then they add this the furring out which is the cantilever the frame and then they designing about the framing and then they adding the motor here and this motor actually control the two panel together top and bottom so they using the 112 the metal tile which is a they using the 112 metal tile and it is operated by 56 motor engine okay so this 56 engine actually make out the very dynamic and very interesting facade image okay so let's watch next video and you can just better understanding about how architect consider about the facade and then how they designing about the system okay let's watch together The last project is Al Bahar Tower designed by Adas. The project located in Abu Dhabi. So Abu Dhabi is close to Dubai. It means you have to be considered about the desert weather. So it means you have to be considered about the radiant heat protection. So from this region, architect considered to design this origami looking facade. So you can see this origami looking facade is protect radiant heat. But this is automatically changed depending on the time because they have to be controlled by the radiant heat gain. So you, you can see that this is a four different layer. So first layer, it is the main slab structure, and then the second layer, they designing the structure skin, and then they adding the the glazing system, and then they adding the, this origami the sun shading device. This origami sun shading device. The connect on the structure system so you can see the markup panel how it works and then so when totally closing down and then it's totally open it so this is everything the by the sensor and the automatic system to control the this the device so let's watch the next video to understanding about the their system better okay For the glass high-rises that have become the trademark of the cities of the Gulf, 
the most important environmental factor is the desert sun. When architect Abdel Majid Karanouh was asked to design twin buildings in Abu Dhabi that are contemporary, sustainable, and culturally relevant, he looked to tradition. Not allowing the sun to land directly on the skin of the building, causing overheating and glare, was a very simple concept. And that's why using the mashabiya, inspired from the past and inspired from nature, was a no-brainer. Used in Islamic architecture for centuries, a mashrabiya is a lattice screen used to diffuse sunlight and keep buildings cool without blocking sunlight or a view of the outside. The north side of the buildings, which never receive direct sunlight, are unshaded. The architectural challenge was how to build a facade that could mirror the dynamic movement of the sun. So we started looking at something that could be more three-dimensional, offer more flexibility offer more geometrical shapes that could adjust to the movement of the sun. The solution was inspired by another traditional art, origami. These computer-controlled three-dimensional triangular screens respond directly to the sun's movement, unfolding like an umbrella when the sunlight hits them. That's what makes these buildings greener. Solar rays can heat the outside surface of windows up to 90 degrees Celsius, nearly 200 degrees Fahrenheit. By shielding the glass from the sun, the screens are reducing solar gain, reducing glare, letting in more diffused natural light into the building, saving energy by requiring less artificial lighting and 50% less air conditioning in the workspaces. You'll notice that the roof is tilted at an angle. Now that's the direction facing south, which gets maximum sunlight. The initial plan was to put solar panels up there, a seemingly obvious solution to save energy in a place as sunny as Abu Dhabi. But it turns out that despite the intense year-round sunshine, the dust and the sand actually make solar panels much less practical than you'd think. Karanuh says even the thinnest layer of dust can reduce the efficiency of solar panels by nearly half. Proper maintenance means regular cleaning using water jets pumping out fresh water, a scarcity in an arid country like the UAE. You may find out that you might spend so much energy to desalinate the water and get it to where it needs to be, and then clean the panels. You'll find out that that energy may equate or even exceed the energy that you get out of the photovoltaic panels. Solar panel technology may eventually become an option in the future, but for now, the simplest solution has been to look to the past. Shams al-Wazir, CNN, Abu Dhabi. So, Case, so I think you just kind of understanding about how architect the transform, transform the shading device technique. So, because currently the sustainable design idea is very important, but when you consider about this sustainable design, it's not just kind of functional way. You have to be also concerned about this aesthetic way. I'm not very big fan of this decorative way. However, this is kind of one method to protect this radiant heat better. Okay? The, the we have a module keys on September 15th, which is on Tuesday. I already announced this module keys type. Um, the module keys, I open the keys on regular class hour, which is at 2 p.m. And then you have to be take all exam and you have to be answer all exam within one hour. Okay. So even it is open book test. However, you have to be answer everything one hour and then you have to be submit before 3.30 p.m. So it means you have to be the study the lecture note and you also have to be study the lecture record because many questions actually from the my lecture record so please study the content I think because about one hour is not a long time so even when you when you don't study and then you just kind of find out all sources during the test it is hard to the getting the good score okay so please study in advance and then so you can just take a test within the one hour on the September 15th, okay? 
So thanks for the first module. I really appreciate everyone to taking the, this module in this difficult time. Please text me or not text me, to email me. So if you have any other question, just let me know. Okay. So good luck on rest of the semester. Thank you guys.